Wonderworks is made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting with additional funding from this station and other public television stations and the National Endowment for the Arts. My dear boy, how are you? In the pink. <laughs> As you can see, India's not been treating me too badly. It must be 20 years, and you still look like a mischievous schoolboy. What's the secret, eh? Indian magic. Must be pretty potent stuff. Perhaps I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> must be parched off your journey. Fancy a chair to pick? Hey, that's something long and cool. Leave me to this. Saeed, don't chair to pick, Jazzy Come. Oh, don't they have magic in Africa, too? Oh, no, 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 not that sort. African magic lies underground. Ah, yes, I got your letter. All true, is it? Every word. Splendid. <laughs> is that your wife? Yes. Beautiful woman. How old was she when she died? Twenty-six. Ever thought of marrying again? No. Now, look, about this scheme of yours, I still don't understand why you need me. Well, I haven't got the resources. Not for something as big as this. Yes, but, I mean, if it's such a cast-iron investment, I mean, why not go to the bank? I want you to have a share in my good fortune. You see, I've never forgotten our school days, crew, when you took a friendless new boy under your wing, invited him to stay with your people during the holidays. And now I've got a chance to repay you for your kindness. Sure you don't want me to lend you the money? Oh, no, I'm quite sure. I want you to have a share in the profits, which, according to the geologist's report, should be beyond our wildest dreams. All right. There you are. What's this? A banker's draft for 100,000. That um, was the sum you mentioned in your letter. But I said that was half the development cost. I, I didn't expect. Are you sure you can afford it? I can't afford to lose it. But stocks and shares bore me. I'd much rather invest in an old friend whose judgment I trust. Thank you. Two old friends, then. Old friend. By the time I return, I expect to hear you've made me as rich as Croesus. Well, if not, may your goddess strike me down. <laughs> <laughs> you going on leave, then? Yes, I'm, I'm taking my little soldier on a tour of Europe. Your little what? soldier? My daughter, Sarah. Ah. Yes, she's going to boarding school. Then I may inform Captain Crewe you will be expecting his daughter early in the new year. Captain Crewe, don't be under any misapprehension, madam. My client may be of junior rank, but I'll wager he's wealthier than all those other officers put together. Crewe, I seem to remember from the obituary column an industrialist of that name, a uh, Hampshire gentleman. The captain is Sir Gerald's son and the sole beneficiary of his considerable fortune. Indeed. Here is a note drawn on his London bank. If you would be good enough to fill in the amount of the first term's fees. As far as the girl's comfort is concerned, money is no object. She is to have her own sitting room, her own pony and carriage, and her own maid. Her own maid? I'm sorry, Mr. Barrow. That is quite impossible. It would only cause resentment among my other girls. I'm sorry, too. It seems I must look elsewhere. But, of course, if that is the captain's wish, then she shall have her name. A French maid. He was very insistent on that point. 
Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Amelia, perhaps it's time we raised our fees. You too. <laughs> oh, I don't want to learn how to be a lady. I want to stay here with you. What's this? Mutiny? You know how we deal with mutineers, don't you? Yes, Papa. Up against the wall, then. What a blindfold. No, thank you. I do not fear death. Very well, then. Firing party. Present. Aim. Oh, excuse me, Captain Sahib. What is it? I think perhaps the prisoner has a last request. Yes, I have. I want to take my books to England. No, he won't need books when you're dead. Oh, please, Papa. I'm not play-acting now. Oh, I'll buy you books. Lots of them. French, German, Italian, all first editions. But our first edition's expensive. Oh, hang the expense. We're going to be very, very rich. We're rich already. Yes, and now we are going to be millionaires. I have just bought a half share in a diamond mine. A diamond mine? Yes, you see, you can leave all your books and clothes behind. I'll buy you a whole new wardrobe in Europe and a whole new library. Oh, Papa. I shall miss you, though. The books and clothes in the world won't make up for that. I shall miss you terribly. For the first few days, perhaps. Then you'll make new friends. Forget all about me. Never. Promise me one thing, little soldier. What? Oh, don't spend all your time reading. Girls of your age should be enjoying themselves. Playing with dolls or something. Oh, I'm too old for dolls. Except, perhaps... Go on. A very special one. A friend I can talk to when you're not there. All right, then. We'll go shopping in London, see if we can find a very special one. Oh, I'm sure we shall find her. She'll be there waiting for us. And her name will be Emily. <laughs> She's what you want. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is Emily, right? She recognized me before I saw her. She doesn't seem very talkative. She doesn't talk, she thinks. And only I know what she's thinking. Soldiers feel like this when they go into battle. Oh, all of them. Even the bravest. Captain Crew, Mum. My dear Captain Crew, what a pleasure it is to meet you at last. beautiful child. It will be a privilege to have charge of her. I'm not beautiful, Miss Minchin. Oh, you don't think so? No. <laughs> well, at least she's not vain. <laughs> Do come in. Please be seated. I have uh, hired a French maid, as you requested. Would you care to see her references? Oh, no, no, no. That won't be necessary. I'm sure she'll do very well. I've also hired a pony and carriage, 
Anne and Sarah will have the prettiest rooms in the house. They are on the first floor with a lovely view of the square. Thank you, Miss Mitchell. Emily thanks you too. Emily? My doll. She'll be my intimate friend when Pa has gone. <laughs> what an adorable creature she is, to be sure. Yes, Miss Mitchell. You'll um, take good care of my little soldier for me, won't you? She's all I have in the world. Set your mind at rest, Captain. My sister and I cherish these girls as if they were our own daughters. Would you care to see your rooms, my dear? Yes, please. Mariette is looking forward to meeting you. Your papa and I have a few things to discuss, after which he will come and take his leave of you. Henrietta, will you show Miss Crewe her rooms, please? Yes, ma'am. Maria, this is Miss Crewe. Oh, well, I love tea. Thank you, Henriette. Viens, ma chérie. Viens. Enchanté de faire votre connaissance, mademoiselle. So you speak French? My mother was French. I never knew her, but I think that's why I found it so easy to learn. Oh, c'est très bien, cela. I'm called Mariette. Yes, I know. <laughs> I've been unpacking your clothes. What wonderful trimmings and fine petticoats. Not even the Marquis de Souillac had such a trousseau. Would you like me to help you? Oh, no, ma petite. Ladies do not unpack their own suitcases. That is my task. Oh, what a lovely room. Don't you think so, Emily? We should be happy here. Good. Thank you. I am. Um... I shouldn't like Emily to be homesick. This is your papa? Yes. Then I will leave you alone together. Excuse me, monsieur. Well, little soldier. I'm afraid the time has come. Yes. Try not to be lonely, Papa. You too. Oh, I shall be all right. As you say, I'll soon make new friends. Such a stare. You look as if you're learning me by heart. Inside my heart. And you're inside mine too. You'll be inside it even when you're 3,000 miles away. Never forget that, little soldier. You'd better go. You don't want me to see you cry, do you? and cry in front of the men. Frightfully bad form. She's got seven. 
in petticoats, Lavinia. I happened to pass her room while her maid was hanging them up. I counted at least seven. Ridiculous. Who does she think she is? And at least ten pairs of shoes. They're absolutely tiny. She must have very small feet. Oh, don't be so naive, Jessie. It's the way they're made. Any clever shoemaker can make big feet look small. Have you seen her yet? From a distance. She isn't even pretty. No, but she's got an interesting face. What's interesting about it? Her eyes, I think. They seem to go right through you. As if... As if she was summing you up. You girls have no business to be summing anyone up. It's us who should be summing her up. of attention. Silk stockings, too. And she has mm. got small feet. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jessie. I'm sick and tired of hearing about her feet. It's the most boring subject in the world. Good morning, young ladies. Good morning, Miss Lynch. Be seated. First of all, I wish to introduce to you your new companion, Sarah Clavier. This is Sarah Crewe, who has come to us from a very great distance. From India, in fact. What? India! As soon as lessons are over, you must make each other's acquaintance. Girls? Now, Sarah, let us talk about your curriculum. Do you know what a curriculum is? Yes, Miss Winchin. Oh. I assume that since your papa wished me to engage a French maid, he wishes you to study the French language. I think he asked you to engage her because he thought it would please me. Please you? I'm afraid you've been a very spoiled little girl, haven't you? You mustn't imagine that everything is done for your pleasure. I don't imagine that. Well pleasure. brought up, young ladies. Do not interrupt, Sarah. My impression is that your papa wishes you to learn French, and so that is what you will do. But Monsieur Dufarge will be here directly. Take this book of elementary grammar and study it until he arrives. But no buts. Sit down, please. At once. And don't sulk. It is not at all becoming. I wasn't sulking. You were just... looking cross, which is much the same thing. You must learn to do as you are told, with good grace. Bonjour, mes enfants. Bonjour, monsieur. Asseyez-vous, asseyez-vous. Oh, madame, you have a new pupil for me, I see. Yes, monsieur Dufarge. Her name is Sarah Crew. Her pup... Stand up, Sarah. Her father is very anxious she should begin to learn your beautiful language, but she seems to have taken rather a childish prejudice against it. Hmm, indeed, mademoiselle. Then I hope I may be able to change your opinion. I'm sure that after we have studied together for a few weeks... Monsieur Dufage, je regrette que madame est mal compris. Je pense que votre langue est la plus belle du monde. Ma mère était française, et c'est pour ça que papa m'a appris le vocabulaire de base qu'on connaît très bien. There seems to have been a misunderstanding, madame. Silence!
doesn't get a move on, she'll be too late for lunch and all. <laughs> Your turn, now, mademoiselle. Oh, hello. Bon. Um, Bonjour, mon soli blanger. Ave. Ave vous li bon pang. No, 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 Monsieur de Barge, she's so stupid. <laughs> Nevertheless, we must persevere. Uh, translate, please, mademoiselle. Bonjour, monsieur le boulanger. Uh, good day, Mr. Butcher. Baker. <laughs> Avez-vous le bon pain? Have you the good <laughs> pain? <laughs> Silence. How many times must I tell you le pain, the bread, hmm? Before we meet again, you will write it out 100 times. Yes, monsieur. Très bien, ça. Ah, it is 11 o'clock. The lesson is terminated. Au revoir, mes enfants. your name? Ermengarde. Mine's Sarah. Yes. I'm interested in names, so I looked mine up in a book. Did you know the first Sarah was Abraham's wife? Originally, she was called Sarai, the quarrelsome, but it was changed by divine degree to Sarah, the princess. Is it true that you have a favorite to yourself? Yes. Would you like to see it? Oh, may I? Oh, come on. Oh. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, may I? Not before you've been introduced. Wouldn't be proper. Emily, this is Ermengard. Ermengard, Emily. Papa gave her to me as a going away present. Do you love your father, Ermengarde? More than anyone else in the world? Not really. I I'd like to, but he thinks I'm stupid. And if people don't like you, you can't really love them, can you? Well, I love mine, but we're going to be apart for so long. Have a good cry, then. I won't tell. Soldiers don't cry. The Papa's a soldier, so he taught me to bear my wounds bravely. I cried the whole of my first term, even though I wasn't a bit homesick. Silly, wasn't it? Expect it was shock. Yes. You soon get over it, though, don't you? Once you've made some friends. I haven't got any friends. No friends? How long have you been here? A year. But that's terrible. I'm stupid, you see. And fat. People don't want friends like that. I do. You, you really mean that? You're not just saying it because you feel sorry for me. It's myself I feel sorry for. I need a friend, too. But you're so clever and I'm so boring. I don't find you at all boring. And I'll tell you what, Ermengarde. If you'll keep Emily and me company where we're lonely, we'll help you with your lessons. I have been so worried about you. Carriage lost a wheel. The driver and I had to spend last night by the roadside with no protection from the storm. I believe I caught a chill. Well, then you must get home. I've lit a fire in your study room. Thank you, Anna. And the Missy Sahib? She'll be all right. Fine school. Come on, Lelo. The house has been so quiet without her. Yes. Yes, to tell you the truth, I've been dreading these first few days, Becca. You 
true English. I'll never understand. What? Why you have to send your children away. Wait. Teaches them to stand on their own two feet. Yes, but childhood is so short. When she returns, she will be a young woman. For heaven's sake, Andrew, I'm miserable enough without you nagging at me. And let's agree not to... Captain Saeed? It's a touch of fever, I think. My, my head's swimming. I will bring you a hot drink. Let un chant d'amour Christ au guet tour à tour. Excuse me, miss. Any shoes to clean? Oh, yes. It's only Becky, the scurry maid. But she looks so thin and tired. Yes, they do not treat her well downstairs. Ellie, it must be awful to be poor. Oh, do not concern yourself, petite mademoiselle. <laughs> Fortunately, it is a condition that you will never, ever experience. <laughs> My dear crew, I don't know how to soften the terrible news I have to tell, so I must come straight out with it. The geologist was wrong. There are no diamonds, and we have both lost everything. Oh, my God. My own brain means nothing to me. But when I think of the injury I've done to you, old fellow, I want to die. Several times I've taken out my revolver and put it to my head, but that is the coward's way. My punishment must be to live on, to face my shame and your anger. Consequently, as soon as I can raise the fare, I will come to India and beg your forgiveness. Your humble servant, for you will no longer consider me your friend, Tom Carrisford. And she isn't me. Not luck. It is the will of God. I mean, God wants some people to be poor. Perhaps. But why? As a trial. To strengthen their characters. Allez. Bonne nuit, ma chérie. Bonne nuit, Mariette. Faites vos rêves. Take some more medicine. No, the foul taste of stuff won't make any difference. Come, Captain Sahib. You are young and strong. You will be on your feet in no time at all. I worry about you. And about the poor darling Mrs. Sahib. Oh, Anna, what's to become of her? Set your mind at rest, huh? When she returns, it will be just as before. We shall look after her together. She doesn't know about the letter. 
want to spoil it for her because it's her birthday soon. I've ordered lots of presents. Expensive presents. God knows how I'll pay for them. She might as well enjoy herself while she can. Becky, wake up. Your name is Becky, isn't it? Yes, miss. How did you know? I asked Mariette. But why? I felt sorry for you. You look so thin and tired. Don't they give you enough to eat? But that's awful. I shall speak to Miss Minchin about it. Oh, oh no, Miss, please don't do that. You should find me out in the street. shopping tomorrow morning. I'll bring some back for you. Oh, miss. Don't call me miss. My name's Sarah. I know. But I couldn't call you by your real name. Why not? It won't be right. What were you being a princess and all? I'm not a princess. No? Well, that's what they call you down in the kitchens. Rebecca, if I had wished to have my stairs cleaned at this place, I would have hired a tortoise for the job. It's just not fair, Lavinia. She's not nearly as pretty as me, and very much younger. Why should she lead the line every Sunday? Because Minton's a snob, that's why. I have plenty of expensive clothes at home, but I wouldn't dream of wearing them here. It's frightfully common to flaunt one's wealth. Little show-off. It's disgusting the way Minton forms on her. Sarah Laird, oh, come and speak French to Lady Pitkin. I want her to hear your accent. And come and talk to Mrs Musgrave, that India Laird, dear. Her son's about to enlist. Anybody think her father was a general or something? He may be rich, but he's still only a captain. Is a captain's daughter oughtn't to be leading the line? Don't you agree? Fatty. What? I said Sarah ought to be bringing up the rear. Don't you think so? It's not up to me. But if it was? I don't know. You don't know anything, do you? Except that Sarah's rich. That's why you've become her little toad. That's not true. Of course it is. And in exchange, she lets you walk with her. If you could ever get to the front of the line without your hoity-toity friend, a fat, clumsy girl like you. I asked you a question. No, I don't suppose I would. But that's not the reason I'm her friend. So what is the reason? She's the only one who's kind to me. Kind to you? You mean she buys you things? No, I don't mean that. It's her money. Go on, admit it. It's not her money. Come on, Jessie. Let's make her admit it. Right. Ow! You're hurting me! I will go on hurting you till you tell us the truth. Why have you become a princess's lady in waiting? Oh, please stop! Ow! Eat after me. It's because she's rich. But it isn't! Ow! Oh, all right. I'll say it. Because she's rich. It's because she's rich. You see, Jessie, without her money, she'd have no friends at all. Haven't. haven't what? Got a 
than enough. Neither have I. Why? Where is she? In heaven, like yours. Oh. Doesn't mean they can't see us, though. I'm sure they come out every now and then to take a look at us. Perhaps they're here now, in this room. You wouldn't want them to see you crying, would you? Well, I can't see them. No, when you go to heaven, you become invisible. Why? It's a rule. Angels aren't allowed to be seen. You mean, my mama's an angel? With white nightgown and wings? Yes. I don't want a mamma I can't see. All right, then. I'll be your mamma. Just till you're old enough not to need one. in heaven have wings? Yes. Why? Because it's such a big place. If the angels couldn't fly, it'd take them ages to get from one end to the other. But why would they want to get to the other end? To see all the wonderful sights. What sights? Fields of lilies, streets of gold, walls made of pearls and emeralds. But why do they have to wear nightgowns? In case they want to go to sleep. Flying's very tiring, you see, and you have to rest every hour or so. Thank you, Becky. It's from India, right? From your dad. That's why I brought it out straight away. Was that the only reason? Well, I was wondering if you went to the shops yet. Yes. I'm afraid you'll have to run along now, Otty. But you haven't finished showing me about heaven. I'll tell you some more later. I want to read my letter. Goodbye, The dressing table, Becky, the bottom drawer. Oh, miss. How many can you spare? All of them. They're all for you. Oh, well, thank you, miss. What does he say? It's just to wish me a happy birthday. Oh, when is it? Next week, Tuesday. I don't have no birthday. But you must have. Everyone has a birthday. Well, I suppose I do. But I don't know when it is. I was left outside the hospital, see? With a baby. So I never knew me, Mum or Dad. Oh, Becky, what a terrible life you've had. Oh, it's not so bad now. This place is better than the orphanage. Only thing is, when Cook's in one of her moods, I don't get no food. Don't worry, I'll always have some for you. Hello? Yes, Captain Sahib? I'm so sorry. Sorry? For being so... There is nothing to forgive.
pricing it, Mum. She sends her apologies. Well, one can't eat apologies. Now, tell her to hurry. I want everything here by half past two. Yes, Mum. Oh, good gracious. I've never seen such a feast. Fit for a princess, wouldn't you say? Can we afford it? Oh, it will all go on the captain's account, along with these absurdly expensive gifts. Hmm. You certainly haven't stinted the child. I thought you didn't like her. Oh, this is not for Sarah's benefit, Amelia. No? No, we have some important visitors arriving. Or have you forgotten? Oh, Lord and Lady Atwood. Yes. It will do no harm at all for them to see how we celebrate a pupil's birthday. Particularly as we're not paying for it. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Just sad face, ma petite. Are you not excited? Yes. I just wish Papa could be here. Oh, it's no use wishing for things that can never be. I'm sure. He wouldn't like you to be sad on such a day. Oh, someone has left you a package. You know who left it? Yes. And she doesn't know how to spell. Oh, Mariette, there are more important things in life than spelling. You better hurry up. Well, look, she'll just have to wait, won't she? Oh. Hello, miss. Happy birthday, miss. Thank you so much. What a wonderful present. Did you like it, miss? Really? Oh, it's beautiful. I shall keep it by my bedside, so it'll be the first thing I see in the morning. It's only cheap stuff in the market, but you said you like to pretend, didn't you? And you could pretend it's satin with diamond pins stuck in it. Oh, I don't have to pretend. I like it just as it is. I made it myself. Though the stitching's not very good. Oh, it's perfect. It's the most perfect present you could have given me. Oh, Becky, I do love you. When will happy, set the bells on. It is not your place to smile at my young ladies. No, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Now leave us. Oh, please, Miss Minchin. May Becky stay? Rebecca? Why, Sarah, dear? Because I know she'd like to see the presents. After all, she's a young girl, too. <laughs> she most certainly is not. She's a scullery maid. Oh, please, Miss Minchin. I know she'd enjoy it. Please let her stay. Very well, Sarah. Since it is your birthday, I accede to your request. Rebecca, thank Miss Sarah for her kindness. Thank you, Miss. Thank you ever so much, Mum. I did so want to see the present. Well, go and stand over there in the corner. Not too near my young ladies. Now, before Sarah opens her presents, I should like to say a few words. Mm. Stand back, please. Everybody stand back. Now, we all consider our birthdays to be very special occasions. Do we not, Lottie? Yes, Miss but in Sarah's case, it is an extra special occasion because it will bring her one year nearer to the time when she will inherit a large fortune from an army captain. It will be her duty to spend her money in a meritorious manner, Lavinia. That is why I am so pleased her dear papa has entrusted her to my care. For what use is money without a good education? What use is good education without money? Did you say something, Lavinia? No, Miss Minchin. I hope you all appreciate Sarah's generosity in giving you this party, and I would like you all to express your gratitude by saying all together, out loud, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for coming to my party. A very pretty curtsy, dear. Right, well, then I shall um, leave you all to enjoy yourselves. This one, Sarah. Open this one first. <laughs> Books. Fancy sending you books. That was the first thing my papa would send. I asked for them. Asked for books? Why? Because I like reading. Oh, the princess likes reading, does she? I suppose little teacher had spent her fortune in a meritorious manner. The 
This one's in French. Perhaps she's thinking of buying France. <laughs> Don't take any notice, Sarah. Open this one. Come on, Becky, come and look. The mistress told me to keep your distance, miss. Well, I tell you to come closer, and it's my birthday. What a lovely hat. Put it on. You look beautiful, Mama. Really beautiful. <laughs> your Papa solicitor has called to see Miss Minchin. As the refreshments are laid out in her room, she suggests you take your tea now, then she can talk to him in here. Hey, hey. I want it. It's hardly a day like that expressing yourself, Dottie. Now, if you form into two ranks, and Sarah will lead us to the feast in an orderly fashion. Quick, oh, high spirited, I fear. It will end in tears. Pray do sit down, Mr. Barrow. I'd rather stand, thank you, madam. Oh, as you wish. Extravagance, ridiculous extravagance. <laughs> Such a foolish young man. Captain Crewe? The licked Captain Crewe. You don't mean he's... Dead, madam. And he died a pauper. A pauper? Oh, but that is not possible. All that's left in the estate is a half share in some African hole in the ground. His partner apparently told him there were diamonds at the bottom. Must have been a swindler. Uh, but uh, uh, the party, all these gifts... I paid for them. Then you too have gambled and lost. Well, why should I be the loser? You are the captain's legal representative. It was you who told me to hire a carriage, engage a French maid. I was merely carrying out my client's instructions, his written instructions, which I can produce in court if necessary. And what about your moral responsibility? We are not even morally responsible for our client's debts, madam. As a matter of fact, our own account with the captain remains unpaid. You can afford it. I can't. This is absolutely outrageous. Please don't think me unsympathetic. You have every right to be angry. And what about the girl? Has she any relatives? None that I know of. Oh, well, she's not staying here. I shall turn her out into the street. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? It wouldn't look well. Penniless pupil sent packing by young ladies' seminary. The story would soon get about. Then what am I to do with her? Why not put her to work? And then she can pay off the debt herself. She's a clever child, I believe. And I'm sure she'll give you satisfaction. Good afternoon. on my private conversation. I'm sorry, Mum. I know I didn't ought to have it. Only I was looking at the presents, and when I heard you coming, I just got in a panic like. Did you hear? <laughs> Nothing, Mum, except the poor Miss Sarah ain't got a dad no more, and she's lost all her money. <laughs> Leave this room this instant! <laughs> but what would she do? I mean, she's used to having a maid in that. Would you let me wait on her after I've done me making the duties, Mum? Then poor Miss Sarah wouldn't feel so bad. Poor Miss Sarah will wait on herself. Poor Miss Sarah will wait on others. Now leave this room or leave my house. And so you say all of us, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. Upstairs, change out of your party frocks and assemble in the schoolroom. Sarah, you will remain here. Quickly. Quick sticks in. Come along, come along, come along. Slow coach. Quickly. What's the matter, sister? Never mind. I want no 
crying and no unpleasant scenes. I have some bad news. Not... Papa. He's dead. And before he died, he lost every penny of his fortune. You are left a pauper on my hands. Dead. You are a beggar, Sarah. And it appears you have no other relative to take care of you. Papa. Dead. Don't you understand what I'm saying? You are quite alone in the world. Entirely dependent on my charity. There'll be no more of your grand airs. No more of this princess nonsense. Your ridiculously expensive finery belongs to me. And it will have to be so. Pay for all this. <laughs> if I choose to give you shelter, you must work for your living. Work? Yes. If I can work, it won't hurt so much. What must I do? You must do whatever I tell you to do. Have you got a black dress in that sumptuous wardrobe upstairs? Yes, but it's too small for me. Go and put it on. And take those ridiculous ringlets out of your hair. And then I will show you to your new quarters. Wait! Aren't you going to thank me? Thank you. For my kindness in giving you a home. No, Miss Minchin, you are not kind. And this is not a home. What will you do, Marianne? <sighs> Seek a new position, of course. And an employer who can afford to pay my wages. Please forgive Papa. I'm sure it wasn't his fault that he lost all his money. Perhaps I should have asked to see his references. It wasn't my fault either. Did I say that it was? No. But you just seem so cold, as if you blamed me. Don't you like me anymore? I do not dislike you. And I wish you well. Now I must think of myself. Yes, yes, of course. Are you ready, Sarah? Yes, Miss Minchin. Then come along. You're late, Sarah. I'm sorry, Miss Minchin. Don't let it occur again. 
And in future, you will address me as Mum. <laughs> well? Yes, Mum. Now, you will begin your duties by helping with the younger children, see that they behave and do not waste their food. Lottie has already upset her milk. Yes, Mum. Come along, everyone. Get on with Is your it true, Mama? Are you really poor now? Yes, Mum. Yes, as poor as the beggar? No, beggars have nowhere to live. At least I have a room of my own. A new room? Yes. Is it nice? Can I come and see it? I don't think that would be a very good idea. Why not? Miss Minchin wouldn't approve. You can't stop me. You're my mamma. No, Lottie, not anymore. You don't really want to poor mamma, do you? Come and go. You will no longer associate with the other pupils when you are not helping the younger children with their revision. You will lead a separate life, one more suited to your changed circumstances. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. And you will not behave like an ill-used heroine. I do not want my girls writing to their parents that you have been badly treated. Because you are not being badly treated. I have given you a home. That is a great deal more than you have any right to expect. During the rest of the day, you will be at Cook's disposal. In the evening, when you have finished your household duties, quietly in the corridor, you may concentrate on your education. Take whatever books you require and study them in the privacy of your room, away from the other girls. Still no word of thanks. Thank you, Mother. That's better. Now go down to the kitchen and see what Cook wants you to do. Never mind, if you work hard, you can buy another one next week. Don't tease her in the air. She's just lost her dad, so? I lost my dad when I was seven, and good riddance too, drunk and brute. Right, you can start by scrubbing this floor. Oh, sorry to spoil them lily white hands of yours, love, but uh, now you're a member of the working classes, you can forget about looking pretty. Come on, through here. Buckets under the sink. Mop? Mop? I didn't say mop the floor, did I? I said scrub it with a brush. That means getting down on your hands and knees. Here, I'll put it for No, you won't. Leave her alone. She's got to learn sometime. Right now, put the soap plates in. Sarah, a little too hard, do you? No, I don't. The sooner the child learns what's expected of her, the better. Well, you don't think she's expecting a little too much? I mean, she is only 11. Amelia, do you know how much Captain Crewe owed us? 
with the birthday gift to the party, the hire of the pony and carriage, somewhere in excess of £260. On top of which, I have received a letter, a solicitor's letter, informing me that since I engaged Mariette, I am legally responsible for her wages till the end of term, which amount to another 20 yeah, but that is hardly her fault. Well, of course it is. She shouldn't have had such ridiculously expensive taste. But it wasn't her. It was just that her father indulged herself. Exactly. And the sins of the father should be visited on the children. Oh, well, that is God's prerogative, not ours. Amelia, how else are we to pay off that debt? Well, I'm not saying that she shouldn't work. Just that the regime should be a little less harsh. Well, but it will become a little less harsh as she grows older. At the moment, she is merely saving us the wages of a maid of all work. In time, as she begins to teach the older children, she will save us the wages of an instructress. Then, and only then, will her duties become less arduous. Sarah! Sarah! Yes? How are you? Well, I haven't had time to think about it. How are you? I'm very well. Good. Are you... very unhappy? You mean, scrubbing floors all day? Carrying coal buckets up the stairs? Peeling potatoes? How could I possibly be unhappy? in the Bastille used to make friends with rats. Why don't I make friends with you? My name's Sarah. And your name is? Let's see now. What shall I call you? You look like a king rat. So I shall give you a kingly sort of name. I know. Melchizedek. He must have been a kind king, because he gave Abraham some bread and wine. Perhaps you're hungry and thirsty now, Melchizedek. I'm afraid I haven't got any wine. But I've got some bread. If you come here, I'll share it with you. I see. Even you don't want to talk to me. Even you don't want to be friends. Well, see if I care. The master wasn't just my junior officer. He was my friend. I know. I still don't understand it. I thought he was a man of means, but it seems he owed money all over the place. I had to pay his mess bill out of my own pocket. Ethra! Who has bought all these things? I have no idea. I had a message from a bank in Delhi. A gentleman who wished to remain anonymous offered to purchase all the captain's effects. 
So, they asked me to have them valued and put into storage. All except this. Golly. He wants to take her back to England with him. She used to be sent straight to the docks in Bombay. That is very strange. What? Well, that he should know the captain possessed such a statue. Yes. Suggests he's been here, doesn't it? Well, anyway, his money's a godsend. It'll settle all your master's debts. I hope he is a good man. Otherwise, Kali will destroy him. Very good. <clears throat> no, Lottie. Not La Maison. La Maison. <clears throat> but you said that feminine words ended with me. I said most words ending with an E are feminine, but some words that don't end with an E are feminine too. I hate French. You'll like it when you get used to it. I don't think I shall ever get used to it. How did you learn it? My mama was French. You mean before she went to heaven? Yes. That must mean I've got a French grandmama. No, Lottie, I told you. I'm not your mama anymore. I don't mind if you're poor, and I want to see your new room. You wouldn't like it. Why not? It's right at the top of the house, and it's small and cold and damp. But that's a skivvy's room, and I know that you're a real skivvy. Oh, yes, she is, Lottie. She tried to hide it by wearing all those expensive clothes, but she was always a real skivvy underneath. What are you doing? You shouldn't be caught up here. I wanted to see where you lived. Well, now you've seen it. You better go back downstairs or I shall get into trouble. You're right. It is cold and damp. <sighs> it's not so bad. There's a nice view from the window. I was just looking at it. See all sorts of interesting things. What sort of things? Rooftops, with chimneys and smoke curling up into the sky. Sparrows hopping about and talking to each other. Attic windows belonging to other houses. You couldn't see any of those things from my other room. Can I see? Will you lift me up so I can see? All right. I have to be very quiet. It's a nice view. You see that window? Yes. That's the attic belonging to the next house. The empty house? The one that's for sale? Yes. But I pretend that another girl lives there. A beautiful French princess. And her father and mother, the king and queen, have 
just been sent to the guillotine. What's that? A sort of mechanical axe that chops people's heads off. Oh, I shouldn't like to be sent there. So she's in great danger. We both are. Because we're a threat to the king's enemies. You mean you might have your heads chopped off? They might come for us any day now. But there's just one hope. A handsome soldier called D'Artagnan. He and his musketeers are loyal to the crown, you see. I know they're making plans to rescue me. Do you think the mistress would listen to my excuses? The supper wasn't on time. Paul here, is it? Yes. Come on. Hold that. Sugar, tea, sultanas, cheese. Where's the parsley? That wasn't on the list. I, I can't serve boiled potatoes without parsley. You'll have to go back to the greengrocers. But it's nearly closing time. Then you'll have to get a move on then, won't you? Too late. What'd you do? Stop to order yourself a new bo bows? Get those upstairs. All right. You're too late for supper and all. But it wasn't my fault, Cook. I ran all the way. Look, don't give me no more of your excuses or I'll give you a good hiding. You're not having any more supper and that's that. Just have some bread. No, you can't. Didn't they teach you the Bible in India? To them that hath not shall be taken away. You hath not the parsley. Therefore, I've taken away your supper. Now get out of my kitchen. Thank you. 
people could be so cruel. people change lately. I thought you might have changed too. And I thought it was you who changed. I have. How? I don't trust people anymore. You trust me though. And Emily. Emily's not a person. She never feels anything because she hasn't a heart. And she can't think because her head's full of sawdust. She's nothing but a stupid doll.
I'm sure you won't have enough to eat this Christmas. Here's sixpence for you. Oh, no. Thank you very much, but I couldn't possibly. Of course you can. It's a whole sixpence. You can buy some food with it. But I'm not a beggar. It doesn't matter. You look as though you're in need. Go on, take it. Thank you. was a beggar, you see. It was quite a shock, really. I mean, I had no idea I looked so poor. Do you think she's Duke's daughter, Papa? I should think it's very unlikely. Then how did she learn to speak so well? Yeah. Well, she probably listened to the pupils and copied them. Look, she had this, this air about her. It didn't seem to go with her shabby clothes. Mm -hmm. And that cloak she was wearing. It was dirty and torn. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a cheap one. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we invite her for Christmas, Mama? Oh, yes, no, please. Oh, we have that so much. Oh, she good. seems to have so little. Oh, Why don't we invite her for Christmas It's dinner? a nice then... thought, Donald. But I'm afraid if she's in service at the seminary, we cannot interfere. Oh, oh please. Why not? The headmistress would take it as a slight. Oh. Besides, if she almost Thank refused you. your sixpence, she's hardly likely to accept any more charity. Do you think she's too proud? She was too proud to beg, wasn't she? Crusts! Good Lord! What, dear? I must buy a house. What's the matter with this one? It's not for us, Donald. It's for a client. Oh! oh. He might get down. He might get down. Yes, we all get down. He's returning to England after many years abroad. <laughs> What about the one across the square next to the seminary? It's been on the market for months, so I'm sure the agents will listen to a reasonable offer. Yes, what a good idea. This might be just what they're looking for. I'll call on them this morning. Remember, when you arrive back in the bosom of your families, that Christmas is a time of peace and goodwill. It is not merely for the giving and receiving of presents, Victoria, but to celebrate the birth of our Lord. So, throughout the festive season, I would like you all to behave like good Christian children, with obedience, Claudia, towards your mamas and papas, and with charity towards those less fortunate than yourselves. To those girls whose parents are abroad and who will therefore remain at the seminary for the holidays, I will say this. Miss Amelia and I will do our best to make up for the enforced separation from your loved ones. On Christmas Day, we shall have a splendid feast, followed by some jolly party games. And I have heard a message from uh, <coughs> Father Christmas to say that he will not be passing us by. So, we shall all, in our various ways, be sharing in Christ's bounty. Do not forget to thank him, as you thank those friends and relatives who are generous towards you. And until we meet again for the Easter time, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Good. That's it. Keep your seats. Can we have one of our each carriage left to right? Have a good time. I shall miss you. I shall miss you too. 
I hope Father Christmas doesn't pass you by. Thank you. But I have a feeling he will. Why? I'm too old for presents. You're only 11. My sister's 15. And he still pulls her stocking. Maybe she's better behaved than I am. She's not. She's awful. She pulls my hair. Well, if she does it again, you just pull hers back. Aren't you even going to hang up your stocking? No. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll write to Father Christmas and ask him not to forget you. Thank you, Lottie. I'm sure that'll make all the difference. Oh, yes. Um, what about the tree? Oh, send Sarah to the market for that. It'll be half the price you charge in the shops. And the turkey, too. She should be able to get a nice cheap one there. No, no, I don't think we should economise on food. Mm -hmm. We don't want the girls writing to their parents that we were parsimonious on such an occasion, do we? Oh, bye-bye, Eleonora. Have a lovely Christmas. Bye, bye Christmas. Besides, it'll all go on the parents' account. Oh, look, a stupid child we left the glove. Stuff Christmas box. Oh, Henrietta, well. run after that stupid child, will you? Can't put uh, them on the parents' account. Dear. What? And we really ought to give them more this year. They haven't had an increase for some time. Oh, what did we give them last year? Uh, two pounds to cook. We'll make it three. That'll stop her asking for an increase in yes. wages. Right. And one pound to Henrietta. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh. Yes. And one pound. To Make it one pound ten. And uh, five shillings to Rebecca? No, give her the same. She's an idle slut. I'd like you to get that. What about Sarah? What about her? Well, uh, we ought to give her something. We already give her something. A roof over her head. And something for Christmas. Uh, Amelia, I can't believe my ears. She already owes us in excess of 260 pounds. Are well, you seriously suggesting not for... one penny? She's not getting one penny more. Miss, miss. There's an Ethan, miss, moving in next door. A what? An Ethan. It's got to be an Ethan. It's got a craven image. Becky, what are you talking about? I've just seen the removal blokes lifting it out of the van. It's an idol. An Ethan idol. And I reckon he worships it. Probably some kind of ornament. No, it's not. He's got four arms and nasty pointed teeth. He's got a necklace made out of skulls and a belt made out of snakes. Carly. Who? Oh? The wife of Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. That thing's never a god's wife. It's a craven image, that's what it is. And I don't fancy living next to an even what bows down to craven images. Papa had a statue of Carly in his study. But he never bowed down to it. What do you want it for, then? He just liked looking at it as a work of art. Work of art? <coughs> He's ugly. <coughs> to a Hindu. What's that? A kind of Indian. There's a gentleman that's moving in next door. He could be an Indian. Mm. Perhaps. You say the removal van's outside? Yeah. And the bloke's left that idol standing on the pavement. Shocking, I'll call it. Let's see if it's still there. of his things there. But I don't think he's an Indian. Why not? Have you seen that other statue? That's Buddha, another god. But you can't be a Buddhist and a Hindu. Oh, be careful with the stick. Be careful. Well, he's an Indian. I've seen him funny acts before. You must make you feel homesick, miss. Yes, that's right, that's right, correct. Suppose he's arranging everything for the new owner. I hope he has children. 
They might use their attic as a playroom, and I can see them from my window. This could be him now. Looks like he's ill. Very ill. He has to have a nurse trap with him. No children. Not even a wife. Doesn't matter. If he likes Indian things, I'll think of him as a friend. You want to be careful, miss. I'll still say he's an even. God bless you, very gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's God, on this the anniversary of the birth of thine only begotten Son, we beseech thee to bless all those who are separated from their loved ones. Comfort and sustain them on this joyous day. Bless too those whose lot it is to serve their fellow creatures. Make them diligent in their duties and humbly grateful both to thee and to their earthly benefactors, so that at the last they too may be admitted to thine everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Young ladies, you may open your gifts. Yes. Those members of staff who wish to do so may stay and watch. Well, what a wonderful yeah. array of gifts. I just wish... Uh, Sarah, if that is a gift, then you will open it downstairs. It would not be seemly to do so here. Yes, Mum. How lovely. What, Neith? Alice through the looking glass. I've read Alice in Wonderland, but I've never read this. Books. What does a skinny want with books? <laughs> they don't teach you to scrap clothes, do they? And they don't tell you how to keep hold of your money. Nor how to recognise a mine where ain't got no diamonds in it. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Cook. Oh. Thank you, Mum. Merry Christmas, Henrietta. Thank you, Mum. Merry Christmas, Rebecca. Thank you kindly, Mum. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. 
Christmas, Mum. Oh, three pounds. Should have been a fiver. Still, it's a quid more than last year. We've got ten more. I've got to say. Here, me first share it with you. Half a crown, Jay. Oh, no, it's sweet of you, but it's your Christmas box. You must keep it. But you didn't get nothing. I didn't expect anything. I almost mentioned so much money, I couldn't expect her to give me any more. But it's not fair. Everyone should get a present at Christmas. I've got one, and it's just what I wanted. Carrots! Sorry again to call you out on Christmas Day, Doctor. I hope we haven't wasted your time. Not at all, my dear man. Your master has jaundice. Jaundice? A general disorder of the system in which bile accumulates in the bloodstream. This can be caused by some mechanical impediment, such as a blocked bile duct. But in a great many cases, it can be caused by a sudden mental shock or prolonged anxiety. Has your master had such a shock uh, recently? Yes, yes, he has. And he drinks spirits, I see. Yes, Doctor, he drinks. He must stop immediately. The bile duct could well be blocked by an inflammation of the liver, a condition aggravated by spirit drinking. I shall have to make some tests, but if he follows my advice, the prognosis should be favourable. Uh, may I ask if he has recovered from the shock? No, and I don't suppose I ever shall. Nonsense. It's just a question of willpower, whether you wish to recover. It seems to me, my dear sir, you're putting up very little resistance to your illness. I cannot emphasise enough that in a case like yours, the mental and the physical go hand in hand. So, if you continue on your present course... I'll just fade away. Exactly. Well, perhaps that would be best. Then, why did you seek medical advice? To please my servant. You would please him a great deal more if you ceased to brood on your troubles. And you must follow a strict diet. No more spirit drinking. No, Doctor. I shall call again tomorrow morning. Good day, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you. Should be seen and not heard. Yes, ma'am. Oh, for heaven's sake! Look what she's done, Miss You clumsy girl! You're not even fit to wait on table. Go to your room this instant. If you found it. It wasn't me, Mum, it was her. She did it on purpose. Nonsense! How dare you accuse one of my young ladies of uncouth behaviour? You will go to your room. You will beg Lavinia's pardon. Well? No, I won't beg her pardon, because it was her fault. Then you will go to your room for the rest of the day. And you will go without luncheon and dinner. But that's not fair. I'm not interested in what you think is fair. You will do as I say. Don't laugh at me, you insolent child. Where are you? I wasn't laughing. I was thinking. What? It would be strange if I turned out to be a princess, after all. Wouldn't it? Well, get on with your lunch. This is supposed to be a festive occasion. Come 
Hi, Pakasak Dahun. Hi. You speak Hindustani? Yes. Miracle. Will your monkey let me catch him or will he bite? No, no, he won't bite. He is, however, frightened of strangers. You better come and fetch him then. Can you get across? I will come at once. Come to Ramdas. There's no use. There is no escape. I shall inform the Sahib of your conduct. And there will be no bananas for you today. Tell me about the Sahib. He comes from India too. No. He was there only a few weeks. Then he became ill and had to return to England. What's the matter with him? He has a disease called jaundice. If he had stayed in India, he would surely have died. I will pray for him. Thank you, Missy Sai. Thank you also for your indulgence. Please, forgive the evil one for his wickedness. I'm sorry about the gloom, Carmichael, but the uh, light hurts my eyes. Please do sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> Have a good Christmas. You're wonderful. And you? No. Oh, Christmas isn't for crusty bachelors like me. It's for children. You have five, don't you? Uh, yes, yes. Four girls and a boy. Perhaps you'd like to meet them. Oh, when I'm on my feet again. Saeed? I'm sure they've much better things to do than visit a boring invalid like me. What did the doctor say? That if I follow his advice, I should make a complete recovery. Though, frankly, I'm not sure it's worth it. Not unless you can find Crew's daughter for me. Have you any news? Yes, Mr. Carrisford, I have. I heard from my French inquiry agent an hour ago. I came straight over to tell you. You found her? Then, for the love of God, man, tell me where she is. Well, I believe that she's in Russia.
Are you hungry? When did you last have something to eat? Can't remember. Today? You had something today? No, never had nothing today. Been read all the bakers. Threw me out. Wait here a minute. chance lost a four penny piece. Where did you find it? Just outside in the gutter. It's yours then. Finders keepers. Thank you. Did you want to buy something? Yes, I'll have four penny buns please. Four buns. Right you are dear. Oh, I never was much good at arithmetic. I can only afford four. That's all I've got, you see. Oh, I can't be bothered to put the other two back. It's a waste of energy. You can have six for fourpence. That is, if you can find a use for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you like a bun? Nice and hot. What do I have to do? Nothing. Just eat it. <laughs> Here's four more. It's ridiculous, John. A wild goose chase. Sending you all the way to Moscow on such tenuous evidence. Mr. Carrisford's clutching at straws. Well, of course he is, my dear. But can you blame him? He's a desperate man. <sighs> I still don't understand why he hasn't been able to find this little girl. There must have been letters from the school. No. The colonel who organised the sale of Captain Crewe's effects had all his papers destroyed. And the Indian woman who looked after Sarah simply vanished without a trace. <sighs> What made you think he sent her to school in Paris? Because her mother was a French woman. Mr. Carris had said that the last time he saw her father, he told him that he was taking his daughter on a tour of Europe before dropping her off at boarding school. Europe, not England. That's why I employed a French inquiry agent. Your carriage is waiting, sir. Thank you. Probably, probably. Shall you meet the Tsar? Shall you ask him to help you look for the little girl? Well, I won't meet the Tsar. We'll have more important things to do. Will you send us pretty picture postcards? Of the Cathedral Square. And Ivan the Terrible Three. And the Great Kremlin Palace. I will send you cards the very second I arrive. Now, run back in, because you all catch cold. <laughs> yes, I love you. Saib has just driven away. May God go with him. Did his children come out to see him off? Yes, Saib. He promised to ask them to visit me. I don't suppose they ever will. Spirits of the lonely invalid appear to be very low today. Yes. And talking of spirits... Uh, no, Saib. What do you mean, no? You're my servant. You do as you're told. No spirits by order of the physician. I could dismiss you, you know. What other servant would put up with your moods, your depressions? Am I so impossible to live with? Totally impossible, Saeed. And today, more than usual. That's because I feel guilty sending Carmichael off to Moscow. There is a verse in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna, in his sermon to Arjuna, advises that when the goal is worthy, action is always better than inaction, even if the consequences of such action are to be regretted. You've made that up. 
Yes, Abe. You're an old fraud, Ramdas. But I don't know what I'd do without you. Ah, there's the little servant girl. The one who lives in the attic. What's she doing? Returning from the shops with baskets that are too heavy for her. They seem to work very hard. And she's not used to it. Of that I am sure. She has not been a servant all her life. If only we could do something to help her. Are you sure about this, love? I don't want to get you into trouble. Trouble? Over a couple of meat pies? Don't be daft, Bert. Well, suppose your mistress finds out. She won't. Charlie ever comes down here. She did a monthly inventory a week ago. Go on. Get stuck in time. Well, don't blame me if she hands you over to the law. I wouldn't mind. As long as it was you. Oh, it wouldn't be. I'd be in the next cell charged with receiving stolen goods. <laughs> I might have to turn Queen's evidence. You couldn't turn Queen's evidence if we was married. Now, look, don't start that again. I've already told you. I can't think about marriage till I get me sergeant stripe. How long will that be? Ten years? Twenty? Maybe next year. Maybe never. Look, love. We've just got to be patient, right? Till I can afford to keep you in style. Look, we don't have to wait. I've got some money put by and I can carry on working. I'm not having my wife going out to work. After we're wed, the only cooking you'll be doing is for me. Late again? What's the excuse this time? Raw carriage got stuck in the mud, did it? Where's the change? This all? What'd you do? I just have another diamond mine. I wrote down how much everything cost. You can see for yourself. All right. You can knock off now. Got to them books of yours. Can I just have something to eat? Uh, there's some bread in the larder. Bread? But I've had nothing but bread since yesterday. Well, I, I'm not cooking up meal especially for you. If you're too high and mighty to eat with the rest of us, you can go without. <laughs> Mama! Yes, Donald? Did you see the little girl who was not a beggar? She was standing on the pavement when Papa left. Watching us. As if... As if what? As if there were a pane of glass between us. And she was on the outside, looking in. She probably has no family of her own, poor child. Like the little girl Papa has gone to look for. Yes! Why should she be in Russia? Because that's where her foster parents live. But she's an English girl. Her foster parents are Russian. And Papa believes they took her back to Moscow. Yes, she was at school in Paris. Why couldn't she have been at school in England? I don't know. Ask Mr. Carrisford. This rich prison food, all the cakes and trifles and jelly. What? Nothing. Let's have a look at these books. Carlyle's French Revolution. I've been wanting to read that. Where did you get them? Papa sent them to me. And the trouble is, he'd have expected me to have read them by the summer. So I was wondering if you could read them and then tell me what they're about. Don't you think you ought to read them yourself? I could never get through all that. And you make history sound so exciting. 
I'd much rather hear about it from you. All right. Thank you. Missing? Meat pies don't just vanish into thin air. How can they be missing? Don't know, Mum. But when did you last see them? Last night. There was definitely in the larder last night. Then someone must have taken them. Yes, Mum. to turn you over to the police. What does mean? I'm honest. I never touched that meat pie. Don't tell falsehoods. Cook says she's missed other things from the larder recently. You ought to go to prison. I never took nothing. Not even when she sent me to bed about no supper. Please, Mum, you can't believe it's me. It's no use, Rebecca. Your infamy has been discovered. Now go to your room for Wicked. the rest of the day. Cruel. Oh, I will decide. It was Cook who stole those meat pies for that policeman of hers. I saw him eating them. Can't you say anything? Gorgon would never believe me. So unfair. Becky's so hungry sometimes she's crossed out of the ash barrel. She'd never dream of stealing anything. Sarah? Are you ever hungry? Oh, my God. What? Oh, I'm never not hungry. So hungry now. Oh, I could eat you. Becky gets less food than I do. Oh, stupid of me. I... We should have known. I didn't want you to know. If you ordered me as a beggar girl, we couldn't stay friends. Nobody could think of you as a beggar girl. You're wrong. A little boy gave me this sixpence because he thought I was in need of charity. One of my aunts sent me a hamper of food yesterday. I'll bring it up tonight while everyone's asleep. And we'll have a banquet. Can we invite the prisoner in the next cell? Of course. Master. I'm Donald Carmichael. Ah, the son of Carmichael Sahib. Yes. I'd like to see Mr. Carrisford. Oh, I am sorry. He is very ill. I've come to cheer him up. <laughs> the little girl's father had a friend, you see. A friend who did him a great wrong. And I want to make it up to him. What sort of wrong, sir? Well, this friend persuaded her father to give him all of his money to put into a diamond mine. And then the father died, believing that he'd lost it all, and that the friend was really a thief. But he wasn't really a thief. No, no, the mine really did have diamonds in it, but he found out only after the father had died. So he never had the chance to prove that he really was a true friend. Poor man. Yes, poor rich man. I don't understand is why an English girl should go to school in France. Because her mother was French. But Papa said she was dead. So her father might have sent her to England, might have he? Europe. He said Europe. England's in Europe. You know there's a school next to your house? She might even be there. There's a girl who works at that school. Little no. servant girl. Yes. Ram Das has talked to her. Couldn't she be the one you're looking for? No, I'm afraid not. No headmistress would ever allow a captain's daughter to become a servant. I don't believe Rebecca stole those meat pies. And who on earth do you think it was? Well, I... I... I have no proof, and I, I hate casting a special... Oh, come along, Amelia. I... This is not a court of law. Who is it you suspect? Cook. Cook? I've noticed that whenever her policeman calls, something disappears from the larder, and he was here earlier today. Oh, why on earth didn't you say something before? Well, I... I didn't think it was all that important. Not important? Well, I suppose if you found out we were feeding half the population of London, you wouldn't consider that important either. Oh. 
Well, it's only one man, and it doesn't happen all that often. Well, as you say, we have no proof. And I don't intend to upset Cook by making unfounded allegations. Oh. He made unfounded allegations against Rebecca. Very well. I shall withdraw them. I just hope your faith in her is not misplaced. Right, it's time to set the table. Set the table, miss? What with? Golden plates, of course. A proper banquet always has golden plates. Handle them carefully, Becky. They're extremely valuable. If you break one, the king and queen will be very cross. Right, miss. Now we need a garland of fresh flowers from the palace garden. And bring that crystal vase from the washstand. It'll do as a centrepiece. You mean this? Oh, really, Becky? Can't you tell the difference between a crystal vase and a silver flagon encrusted with precious jewels? Yes, that's it. But as this is a very special banquet, you'd better bring them both. There, there's only one thing missing. The food! The food is not our responsibility. It's being prepared by the raw chef down in the kitchen. No, a banquet is not a banquet without damask napkins embroidered by Spanish nuns. As it happens, I have just three left. Lovely! Must have taken them ages to embroider these. Five years each. That's why they're so expensive. But in this palace, we don't worry about the expense. Palace, miss? I thought it was a sale. Oh, not tonight, Becky. Just for tonight. It's a huge banqueting hall. See the high vaulted roof and the minstrel's gallery. The log fire blazing in the open grate. The flaming torches casting shadows over the long oak dining table. You can't have cheap napkins in a place like this. No, I suppose not. But you know what I wish? What? I wish the royal chef would get a move on. Throwing that in the gutter, where she belongs. You really hate her? That much? I hate anybody who pretends to be what she isn't. She still walks around with her nose in the air, as if she's too good for the rest of us. Well, it won't be in the air much longer.
This is Rebecca, Duchess of Castile. I bid you both welcome to the palace of my noble father, the king, who was abroad at present on a crusade, but has commanded me to provide you with this sumptuous feast. God bless you, Your Highness. You're a real tough. What ho, their minstrels! Strike up the vials and bassoons. Make the rafters ring with music. And pray you, honoured guests, begin. <laughs> Nothing, Ermengarde. You're far too stupid. I know whose suggestion this was. I was only having a party. Silence! Life. You will leave my service at the end of the month. I got your room. Are these the books your father sent you, Ermengarde? Yes, Miss Minchin. I lent them. To... I wonder what he'd say if he knew you left them in this filthy attic. Take them away. Go to bed. I shall write to your father in the morning, informing him of your misconduct. As for you, Sarah, don't look at me like that. Like what, Ma? As if I were the one who'd committed the crime. What have you to say for yourself? Nothing. Nothing. Not even an apology. I apologize for getting Becky and Ermengarde into trouble. It's your own behavior you should be apologizing for, you insolent child, for repaying my generosity with thoroughness and disobedience. Stay in your room tomorrow, and you will have no supper and no dinner. And unless you feel some remorse, I shall throw you out in the street. dream, Emily. It's funny, because I feel as if my eyes were open. I must still be asleep. I'm sitting up. I'm definitely sitting up, so why am I still dreaming? 
Suppose if I got out of bed, it would all disappear. Come on, Emily, let's see. Right? And that food might as well disappear in our stomachs without here. And she never stirred. No, Said. Well, the poor creature was so exhausted, she would have slept through a thunderstorm. Oh, I should like to have seen her face when she saw your handiwork. Your handiwork, Said. That was merely the humble instrument of your will. There's nothing humble about you, Ramdas. And if you were truly an instrument of my will, you'd bring me the whiskey decanter. I cannot find it, Said. Isn't it against the Sikh religion to tell a lie? Go in the teachers. That if a lie is told with sincerity. Oh, don't be ridiculous. How can you possibly tell a lie with sincerity? It is what you would call a white lie. For the sake of a greater good. My recovery, you mean? You really think that's worth lying for? Oh, certainly, Saib. If you were to die, who would take care of the little servant girl? Delivery. Thank you. Um, sign in, please. Right there. Who is it for? I don't know. It's on the label. So, oh, thanks a lot, miss. Thank you. Brothers or sisters. Well, if it was on your mama's side, it may have been Frenchman. It would explain why he's taken so long to find you. It wouldn't explain how he knew I lived in the right hand attic. Well, whoever it is, it appears you are no longer destitute. Take these clothes and um, put them on. And Sarah? Yes, ma'am? There will be no more work today. You may join the other pupils in the school. Yes, ma'am. mysterious benefactor is a relative, why wasn't the parcel addressed to her by name? Well, presumably it is someone who wishes to provide for her without necessarily becoming involved. Hmm. Well, it looks as if he intends to continue to provide for her. In which case, uh, you made a terrible mistake, haven't you, sister? Mistake? Well, turning her into a slave. If he were to find out how you've been treating her... Oh, I, should... I have been treating her. May I remind you, Amelia, that you are the co-proprietress of this seminary? I know. I should have protested. 
made sure she had enough to eat, had a fire in her room. I, I'm deeply ashamed of I myself. I see no reason why either of us should be ashamed. Her father died owing us over 270 pounds, and yet we gave her a roof over her head. We gave her a home. Only to get our money back, not out of charity. We are not a charitable institution. she get those clothes? Probably stolen. What are you doing here, Skibby? You're not allowed in the schoolroom. It's only for girls whose parents can afford the fees. Oh, shut up, Lavinia! You look beautiful, Sarah. How did it happen? I don't know. Ever since I woke up this morning, everything's been different. I thought it was a dream, but it isn't. It's just the magic. Good morning, young ladies. Oh, Lottie. Sorry, <laughs> Run along. Sarah, you may resume your old desk. And Elizabeth, move over there. Quickly. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Miss Minchin. Right? Yes, Mum. Oh, and uh, you need not call me Mum anymore. I'm quite sure it won't be long before you're a pupil again. <laughs> during the day. But it's still here, large of life. It's not only still here, Becky. The magician's been back. Hot soup, six steaks, apple pie. Now that's what I call magic. I have to get in. Magicians can get in anywhere. They don't have to worry about walls and doors. They just pass straight through them. You mean like a ghost? They're more real than ghosts. Because their magic can actually touch it and feel it and taste it. I'll tell you something, miss. Magic food tastes better than ordinary food. Not the right child. But then who was she? Madame Pascal was right. Her name is Sonia Carew. I met both her and the Russian couple who were adopted her. There's no possible doubt. But the fact that her father died out in India. Just an unfortunate coincidence. Then we shall have to begin all over again. <sighs> Not I, Mr. Garrisford. I, I promised my wife I'd make no further trips abroad. Well, perhaps that won't be necessary. While you were away, I had a great deal of time to think, and it occurred to me that I might have misinterpreted Crewe's words. Misinterpreted them? Yes. He said to me that he was taking his little soldier on a tour of Europe, and I assumed that meant that her school was in Europe. And in view of the fact that her mother was French, the, the most obvious place to start looking was Paris. But, as her father is English... Oh, you mean search in London? Yes. How's this? Dear magician, we know you want to keep yourself a secret, but Becky and I thought you wouldn't mind if I wrote to thank you for your kindness over the last few weeks. We were so cold and hungry, and now we're warm and well fed. Blimey, miss! It's a monkey! <laughs> So you've escaped again, have you? The Sikh will be very cross with him. And so will the Indian gentleman. I'm afraid I'm going to have to take him back. Oh. It doesn't belong to me, you see. It belongs to them. You're very lucky to have a family. 
doesn't know how lucky he is. Chimney. Oh, I'm sorry you have been trouble, Mrs. Saeed. Well, goodbye then. Just a moment. I'm sure my master would wish to thank you also. Will you come inside? My servant tells me you brought our monkey back. Yes, sir. I live in the attic next door, you see, and he was scratching at my skylight. I understand he's visited you before. Please forgive him. It's just that London is such a new and exciting place. There's nothing to forgive, sir. The seat calls him the evil one. He's not evil at all. Just curious. How did you know that Ram Dass was a Sikh? There are lots of Sikhs out in India. India? You used to live in India? Yes, I was born there. Come here, my dear. Are you the little girl? Did my son give you sixpence at Christmas? Yes, sir. And you live next door in the seminary? Yes. But you're not one of the pupils. I used to be. Now I'm just... I don't quite know what I am. Skibby, I suppose. It's what some of the girls call me. A pupil who became a servant? Why? Because my papa lost all his money just before he died. So there was no one to take care of me. How did he lose it? A friend lost it for him. At least, papa thought he was a friend. He should never have trusted him. What are you looking at? A statue of Carly. It's just like... Like what? Like Papa's. What was his name? Crew. Captain Ralph Crew. You see, it was your papa's. I was the friend you thought had betrayed him. And I've been searching all over Europe for you. Ever since he died. And all the time, you were just next door. of this. I can't have a member of my household making unsolicited visits to a neighbour. The point is, young lady, that you are now extremely wealthy. Half of Mr. Carrisford's considerable fortune belongs to you. So I am a princess, after all. What's that? Oh, nothing. It's just a game I used to play. I won't have to go back to the school, will I? No, no, of course not. I want you to come and live here with me. And we can organise a, a private tutor for you. 
Excuse me, sir. Yes, Ramda. The headmistress is here. Oh, good. You'll save me the trouble of calling on her. You'd better show her in. Sahib. Good morning, Mr. Carrisford. Carrisford. I am Miss Minchin, the proprietress of the young ladies' seminary next door. This is Mr. Carmichael, my solicitor. How do you do? He was just about to come and see you. To protest about the intrusion of my charity pupil, I have come to apologize for her presumption. Go home, Sarah. She will be severely punished. Go home at once. No, Miss Minchin. This is her home now. I, I beg your pardon? The fortune which the captain believed was lost has now been recovered, and half of it belongs to this charity pupil of yours. Uh, you mean the diamond mine? Precisely. It has proved to be an excellent investment. Then Sarah must continue with her education. Oh, yes, she will. But not at your seminary. Why not? Were it not for my generosity, she would have starved in the streets. Instead of which, she starved in your attic. Not much of an improvement, by all accounts. Captain Crewe entrusted Sarah to my care, Mr. Carrisford. She must return to my seminary. The law requires it. The law requires nothing of the kind, Miss Minchin. Whether she returns or not is up to her. Then I appeal to you, Sarah. I have not spoiled you, perhaps, but I have always been extremely fond of you. Really, Miss Minchin? I had no idea. <laughs> Children. So often they mistake discipline for lack of concern. However, one day I'm sure she will know how much I cared for her. Cared? Oh, no, Miss Minchin, you never cared for me. And you know quite well that I won't come back with you. Well, Mr. Carrisford, you may think that you are doing the right thing, but you have not undertaken an easy task. The child is both untruthful and ungrateful. And no school on earth could transform such a hardened character. She thinks she's a princess, you know. No, I don't, Miss Minchin. All I ever did was try to behave like one. Well, I, I can't say I'm surprised. If I was Sarah, I wouldn't dream of coming back. Why not? She should be grateful to us. Grateful? Grateful for what? Days of hard labor, a few crusts of oh, bread. Oh, nonsense! Cool. She did a few bits of housework, ran a few errands. You're deceiving yourself. And Maya. in return, we gave her a roof she over her head, hot, wholesome nothing food. Nothing at all. You never showed her a moment's kindness. And because I was afraid of you, neither did I. We both behaved as gracefully. Oh, we've done nothing of the sort. And I, I admit, I never liked the girl because she could see through you. That's why. She knew you for what you are. Pitiless, hard-hearted woman who cares for nothing but money. How dare you, Amelia? Without my care for money, as you put it, you would still be a frumpish nursemaid in some dreary I'd establishment. I'd rather be a frumpish nursemaid than accept your values a moment longer. I'm resigning as your partner, Mariah. I only hope the pupils don't follow your example. Because if they do, you will brought them nothing but misery. Uh <laughs> I knew! <laughs> I don't know why, but I just knew! No, you didn't, Donald. Mm. When you first saw her, you thought she was a baby girl. No, I didn't. I just thought you needed some money. You didn't mind me offering you that sixpence, did you? Mind? I shall always wear it. To remember you by. <laughs> See? It wasn't a mistake. Then why have you gone bright red? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, miss. There's a letter for you. Oh, I think it's for Miss Sarah. Sarah? Where is she? Em, yes, yeah, says she's gone next door with the Indian gentleman. It's been a frightful row about it. I heard the mistress and Miss Amelia going each other round with tongues. And Miss Amelia wasn't half giving the mistress what for. Strange, it's usually the other way round. And Miss Amelia up and left, suitcases and all. This is where I'm going away. Read it, I God. I want to know what's happened to her. It's, it's wonderful. What's wonderful? What does she say? She says her papa's mine had diamonds in it after all. Millions and millions of them. So she's rich again now. Even richer than she was before. I don't believe it. 
just impossible. Oh, Mama, I can't wait to see her. When's she coming back? She's not coming back, Lottie. She's staying with Mr. Carrisford. But she's inviting us both to tea tomorrow afternoon. I'm just a servant, uh, but sometimes I have the power to astonish. For me? For you, from the Missy side. I'm not much good at reading. Can you tell me what she says? She says that my master is to become her legal guardian, and she asks, if you would accept a position in his household as her personal maid. Oh, Miss. What are you thinking, sir? I was just thinking about your question. Why Karma should have treated me so cruelly? If it was to teach me a lesson. What lesson? There are so many poor people in the world. I took Papa's money for granted, you see. I had no idea what it was like not to have any. It taught me a lesson, too, that money doesn't buy happiness. It prevents people from starving, though, doesn't it? It gives them a roof over their heads. Yes. I remember one day, when I was particularly hungry, there was a little girl outside a bun shop was even hungrier than I was. I wonder what became of her, what becomes of all other children who don't have enough to eat. I wish I could help them. That's settled, then. You'll feed any hungry children and send the bills to me every month. Bless you, Miss. It'll be a pleasure. Miss? Excuse the liberty, Miss. What happened to the rags? Oh, they're gone. Very happy now. I just wish the little girl I gave the buns to was as happy. Oh, she's quite happy. You can take my word for it. You've seen her? I see her every day. Anne? Hello, miss. She's my new apprentice, and a fine, hard-working girl she's turned out to be. She couldn't remember her name. So I called her Anne. You're really happy, Anne. Yeah, thanks to you and a mistress. Where is she, Mum? I thought she was poor, like me. Poor? That little one's never been poor. Not even when she hadn't a penny to her name. Oh, yeah. Bye, Sarah. Bye, bye, Mama. 